cold frontal line on the surface weather map. It looks harmless, but the violent weather it represents takes many lives every year. These tragedies can be avoided if the proper flight procedures are used when cold frontal weather is encountered. A typical cold front extends from the center of a low pressure area in a general southwesterly direction. The blue line represents the leading edge of a mass of cold air. Its frontal slope will vary from long shallow slopes, common in slow moving cold fronts, to more abrupt steep slopes in cold fronts that are moving more rapidly. A typical cold front moves in a general southeasterly direction. As it moves, the cold air forces the warm air ahead of it to rise, causing a line of turbulent cumulus clouds to form. They are generally topped by high cirrus clouds. This band of weather may be positioned along the front or in advance of the front as a squall or instability line. If the front is slow moving with a long shallow slope, the weather may be located over the cold air with additional cumulus buildups. Thunderstorms and heavy showers are common along the cold front. Precipitation falling from the frontal clouds causes lower clouds to form reducing ceiling and visibility. Although the cold front weather band is hundreds of miles long, the more common abrupt cold front rarely exceeds 50 miles in width and can therefore be flown through in a few minutes. Since the weather band is narrow and the front is moving, poor landing conditions are temporary over any given point. It is therefore advisable to delay landing until the main storm clouds with the violent turbulence and shifting winds have passed. The turbulence in the cold front clouds can be severe enough to cause you to lose control of your aircraft. Also within this severe turbulence at temperatures of zero degrees centigrade or less, severe icing conditions will exist. When flying through a cold front, always avoid this danger area. Whether approaching from the front or rear, either of two flight procedures is recommended for propeller-driven aircraft on visual or non-controlled flight. Fly at a low level underneath the dangerous turbulence, or at a high level over a saddleback. Jet aircraft will of course follow a flight path above the weather circumnavigating very high cloud buildups when necessary. Penetration of the turbulent clouds should be attempted only if no other course is open to you and your mission is urgent enough to require it. If you must fly at a penetration level, be sure you have at least 4,000 feet minimum terrain clearance and an indicated free air temperature of at least plus 5 degrees centigrade. Remember that the lower in the storm you fly, the less chance you have of encountering severe turbulence, structural icing, and lightning. The cold front may often be hidden by decks of clouds that extend for many miles to the front and rear. When you are approaching at a high level, these cloud decks will hide the base of the front. When you are approaching at a low level, they will conceal the tops of the frontal clouds. When approaching on a low level flight, you should fly underneath the associated cloud decks so that you can inspect the lower portion of the front. If your aircraft is equipped with radar, it will help you identify areas of heavy storm activity when visual inspection is hampered. Low-level flight is recommended over flat terrain or the open sea. 
This procedure should only be used over mountainous country when the peaks and ridges are clearly defined. If the ceiling and visibility are such that contact flight cannot be maintained, do not attempt a low-level flight. In this case, a high-level flight is mandatory. To reach the higher level, reverse your course and conduct your climb away from or clear of the front. Whenever a high-level flight is anticipated, you must approach on top of the associated cloud decks so that you can inspect the upper portion of the front. Select a flight path over a saddleback. If the tops of the saddlebacks are above the ceiling of your aircraft and you decide to descend for a low-level flight, conduct your descent away from or clear of the front. Never climb or descend toward the front when forced to make a new approach at another level. As we have seen, jet aircraft will normally use the high-level approach since cold front thunderstorms rarely extend above jet ceilings. Since the cold front is long and narrow, you will shorten your flying time in the frontal zone by setting a course directly across the weather band at a right angle to the front. This rule applies at any altitude at which you may be flying. You must have a knowledge of the wind shifts associated with the front in order to maintain a straight course. The cold northwesterly winds following the front tend to blow you off course to the south. And the warm southwesterly winds in advance of the front cause a drift toward the north. It is a good rule to always make a heading correction to your right after passing through a cold front, regardless of the direction in which you are flying. The different wind directions on each side of the cold front are indicated by a change in temperature. For example, here you are crabbing toward the northwesterly winds. On passing through the front from the cold side, the outside air temperature will rise. It is important for you to watch for this temperature change as it signals a change in wind direction. It is now necessary for you to make a heading correction to the right in order to stay on course. These wind shifts along with associated temperature changes are encountered along the frontal slope. They are most apparent in the lower portion of the slope in the area of low level flights. At higher levels, you will find that the wind shift and temperature change are less abrupt and less well defined. Also, these wind shifts and temperature changes may be encountered at or near the weather band on low level flights and at some distance from the weather band on high-level flights. You should constantly be aware of weather conditions during the course of a flight. A safe flight will depend upon your analysis of cloud formations, wind shifts, temperature changes, and radar information when available. Imagine that this cold front lies across your course. You are the wingman of a carrier-based flight section. At your pre-flight briefing, the weather officer has given you the position and characteristics of the front. Your orders are to fly a low-level search on a line northwest of your carrier, and you will have to fly through the front on both the outbound and inbound flights. This is your first carrier-based mission, so we will study how your experienced section leader analyzes and flies this weather. The line of cumulus clouds first appears on the northwest horizon, extending as far as you can see to the left and right. The cirrus tops indicate probable thunderstorm activity. The aircraft have been drifting northward, indicating southerly winds, and the outside air temperature is relatively warm. From these facts, the leader knows that he is approaching the cold front. 
As you approach under the preceding deck of clouds, the dark rain area is unbroken, and the pre-flight briefing has indicated that the cloud bases extend down to the surface. Your radar scope confirms that this is a solid and extensive weather line. The leader knows that these conditions mean turbulence and instrument flight, and he does not wish to become separated from you. He therefore reverses the course and climbs on top of the preceding cloud deck to fly over the weather. altitude, the top of the cold front clouds can be seen. The leader selects a course over a saddleback. After passing over the frontal line, the water surface becomes visible under broken clouds. Your leader descends to a low-level search altitude. Here he notices that the outside air temperature is lower than it was at an equivalent level in advance of the front. He has made a heading correction to the right to compensate for the change in wind direction. The search is then continued to its outer limit. As you return toward the carrier and approach the frontal line from the rear, Radar information shows that low-level flight is practicable. As you approach the frontal line, you can see that the cloud bases have lifted, and there are clear spaces between the heavy rain areas. Your leader selects a light area between heavy rain showers and proceeds through the front at a right angle. He flies at an altitude as close to the ocean surface as safety will permit to avoid any extreme turbulence under the cloud formations. As you pass from the region of northerly winds, the outside air temperature increases indicating that you are through the front and in the region of southerly winds. Shortly afterwards, you are out in the clear. As a result of the pre-flight weather briefing and the section leader's sound in-flight weather analysis and good judgment, this mission was completed with apparent ease. If you remain constantly alert to the dangers associated with the cold front, you will be able to fly cold front weather with maximum safety.